in Python. Do you want to be the very best like no one ever was? Well, today I'm going to show you how to create your very own Python Pokemon battle game. This video is intended for beginners and will introduce you to Python classes. And if you're new to this channel, please click that subscribe button. I make a lot of videos about Python programming that I think you'll enjoy. Alright, so to begin, I'm using the text editor Atom, and I'm just going to import a few things. Import NumPy as NP, and let's import Sys, and you'll notice it doesn't recognize that we're using Python, so I'll click File, Save As, and we'll call this Pokemon.py, and once I click Save, all of a sudden, it understands that we're using Python, and you can see that now those imports are in purple. Let's go ahead and add an if name equals main, and for now, we'll just put a pass there. So first things first, I want to be able to print slowly like Game Boys actually print. So I'm going to use this delay printing function that I found online thanks to Stack Overflow. So we'll be able to print one letter at a time just like in the original game. Here's the URL and we'll do for C in S sys.stdout.writec sys.stdout.flush and we'll sleep 0.05 seconds between each letter. Now we are ready to create a class. If you have never created a class in Python before, don't worry, it's not too hard. A class is kind of like functions of functions. They allow you to create objects that have attributes. In our case, we can write a class and use it to create Pokemon objects. Each Pokemon will have its unique attributes like its type and attack power. If you're still a little confused, don't worry, just keep coding with me and I think you'll get it. In Python, to create our Pokemon class, we write the word class and then the name of the class with a colon. Now anything we put indented or inside of this class will be able to be used by any Pokemon objects we create. Let's add a function to our class called init. This is a built-in function name for classes. The init function will be the initialization. In other words, when you create a new Pokemon object, it will be as if you are calling this init function. This is the place we want to include any attributes that a Pokemon initially has. We will try to keep it very simple for this example. And for now, every time you create a function inside of your class, make sure the first parameter is self. And we'll also put the Pokemon name, types, moves, EVs, and health as attributes for each Pokemon once they are initialized. One of the main things we want to do inside of this init function is save any variables as attributes for each Pokemon object. So to do this we'll type self.name is equal to name, self.types is equal to types, self.moves is equal to moves, Let's create a self.attack attribute that comes from the EV's attack. And we'll create a defense attribute that comes from the EV's of defense. And also let's add an attribute called bars. Amount of health bars left for each Pokemon. So each Pokemon will default to having 20 bars worth of health as they start off. Now let's define a function inside of our class called fight. This will allow us to have two Pokemon fight, so we'll give it self and a second Pokemon that we want it to fight. So this will allow two Pokemon to fight each other. So first thing we want to do is print out the fight information. So we can do this just by using a bunch of print statements and using those attributes that we just saved for each Pokemon object. So first we'll do the self Pokemon, so self.name, and let's print out its type, self.types, and we'll print out its attack power, and we'll print out its defense EVs with self.defense.
and we'll print out its level. Now let's just calculate its level based on its attack and defense. We'll do the average of the two plus one and then maybe multiply by three. It really depends on what you want to do here. I'm just going to do that for now, but however you think the level should be calculated. And now let's make a new line for verse and we'll go ahead and copy all of this to make way for our second Pokemon object so we can print out its information. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking this might be better to include as a separate function, but hey, we already got it started, so let's just keep going with it. So we'll just replace all of these selves with the Pokemon 2, so that will access Pokemon 2's attribute name, types, attack, defense, and we'll calculate the level the same way, just based on Pokemon 2's attack and Pokemon 2's defense. And right after this, let's go ahead and do a time.sleep. So that will pause the code for two seconds, because I want you to be able to sit there and read the Pokemon battle before we continue to the next step. Let's consider type advantages for our game. For simplicity, we will only consider three Pokemon types in this game. Fire, water, and grass. So fire is weak against water and water is strong against fire. Water is weak against grass and grass is strong against water. Grass is weak against fire and fire is strong against grass. We could just type out a bunch of if statements to get this to work. If fire, then this, if water, then this. But I wanna try and minimize the amount of if statements that we're gonna have in this code. So I'm gonna do for I, K, and enumerate version where version is each type. So first let's write if self.type is equal to k. And the first case we'll consider if both Pokemon are the same type. So we'll do if Pokemon 2.types is also equal to k. In that case, the attack will not be very effective. So string one attack will say it's not very effective because fire isn't very effective against fire, for example. String 2 attack will be the same story. It's also not very effective. Okay, now let's consider the case where Pokemon 2 is strong against Pokemon 1. So that would be if Pokemon 1 was fire and Pokemon 2 was water, for example. So we have to do this carefully. If Pokemon 2 dot types is equal to version of i plus one and we'll have to mod that by three to make sure the index never goes out of bounds so pokemon two dot attack we're going to multiply it by two since it has the attack advantage and pokemon two dot defense we're also going to multiply by two since pokemon one is weak in this case we will divide its attack and defense by two For our string, string1 attack will say it's not very effective. Because Pokemon 2 is strong, string2 attack will say it's super effective. Okay, and for our last scenario, we'll do Pokemon 2 is weak. The CIA got you pushing too many pencils. Huh? So if Pokemon 2 dot types is equal to equal to a version. We'll do I plus 2 in this case, mod 3. So that's going to always be 2 away from where we're at. So if we're fire, then 1, 2 would be grass. So fire is strong against grass and grass is weak against fire. So we'll do self dot attack times equals 2 because it's strong. Self dot defense. It's a bonus of multiplied by 2, and we'll weaken Pokemon 2's attack and defense. Divide equals 2, and Pokemon 2 dot defense. Divide equals 2. And for our strings, string 1 attack is it's super effective because it's strong, and string 2 attack will say it's not very effective. Alright, so that should take care of our type advantages. 
Now it's time for us to do the actual fighting. So what we're going to do is create a loop that continues while each Pokemon still has health. So while self.bars is greater than zero and Pokemon2.bars is also greater than zero, we will continue to fight. To print the health of each Pokemon. To do this, we'll use an F string and we'll just put in self.name, health, and then self.health. We can do the same thing for Pokemon 2 if we just copy and paste that. Now we're going to take turns of Pokemon attacking each other. So, first we'll do Pokemon 1, print go self.name. And for I, comma, X, and enumerate moves, have the user pick which move to do. So we'll print out a number for them to pick and the move of that particular Pokemon. And we'll have the user input pick a move by using the input. And we'll have to convert that to an int. And now let's delay print with an F string that our Pokemon will use that move. So we'll do self.name used move index minus one. And after we do that move, let's go ahead and sleep for another second. And then let's print out whether or not the attack was effective or not very effective. And now let's use this to determine the damage. And in order to do this, I'm going to recreate Pokemon 2's health bars from the bottom. Every time it attacks, we're going to subtract that amount from the bars. And then we're going to use that to recreate how many health bars are left from the ground up. And if you're not sure what I mean at this point, don't worry. Let's just keep going with it. And I think you'll make sense of it in a minute. So Pokemon2.bars will minus equal the attack power of Pokemon1. So self.attack. And then we'll do Pokemon2.health is just equal to an empty string and we're going to add back those bars plus we'll give it a defensive boost so for j in range the int of pokemon2 dot bars and we'll plus 0.1 times pokemon2 dot defense so we can give it a defensive boost pokemon2 dot health plus equals the equal bar so that's what I mean from creating the bars from the ground up. Every time they attack, they now have zero bars, and then we add back however many Pokemon2.bars has, plus the defensive boost. Keep in mind, at any point, if you're coding along with me, you can choose exactly how you want to implement this. With the damage, I'm building things from the ground up every time, but you can maybe subtract things off. It just depends on what you want to do. And now let's go ahead and sleep, and we'll print out the health bars of both Pokemon now that the attack is complete. And now we're ready to move on to Pokemon 2's turn, so we'll do time.sleep another half second. And before we begin Pokemon 2's turn, let's check to see if Pokemon 2 has fainted after it was attacked by Pokemon 1. No ma'am, he's just fainted. Yeah, as well. Just leave him there. So if Pokemon 2.bars is less than or equal to zero, we'll just delay print that dot 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 Pokemon2.name has fainted and will break out of our loop. But if Pokemon2 hasn't fainted, then it's Pokemon2's turn to attack. So we're just going to copy all the attack that we've done with Pokemon1. And now that I think about this, it might be easier to make this a whole separate function of attacking, but we're already here, so might as well just continue with what we're doing. So we'll paste that in. This time it will be Pokemon2.name. And basically everywhere we see the word self, we can replace with Pokemon2. And everywhere we see Pokemon2, we can replace with Pokemon1. 
and we'll have to replace that string to string two. Self.bars minus equals Pokemon 2's attack now. And self.health is equal to blank. And we'll just quickly replace this here. And now when we check to see if the Pokemon has fainted, we are going to check if Pokemon 1 has fainted. Okay, I think we got everything taken care of. So finally, outside of the loop, I'm just going to do money equals np.random.choice, a uh, number between 0 and 5,000, and we'll delay print that our opponent paid you, and we'll put in money. Just like in the game after you defeat a trainer, they usually pay you money, so I just wanted to put that at the end of the battle. Okay, going down into our if name equals main, now that we have this class figured out, let's go ahead and create a Pokemon object. So for our first Pokemon, let's make Charizard. So Charizard is equal to a Pokemon object and we'll fill in the inits. So the name Charizard, fire is the type, and we'll have a list of moves. So we'll do flamethrower, fly, blast burn, and fire punch. We'll just give it four moves. And now we'll give it a dictionary of EVs. So attack, we'll say its attack is 12 sure and then we'll say defense is I don't know eight okay and now we have created a Pokemon object and just to save you some time I'm going to skip forward of me creating a lot more Pokemon objects okay so now we have a lot of Pokemon objects and if we want one to fight another we simply do the dot fight method and plug in a separate Pokemon so if we do Charizard dot fight and give it blast toys Charizard will fight against Blastoise. That will get them to fight each other. And now going over to our terminal, let's start IPython and run this code and see if it works. So we'll type run Pokemon.py and it looks like it's, oh no! Pokemon object has no attribute health? I could have swore we did that. Oh, but the computer is always right. So let's go ahead and add self.health is equal to health. Okay, now let's see if it runs. Work, work, work. Hey, it's working. Oh, what? Name moves is not defined. Uh, see, this is an important thing with classes. It's very common that you forget the word self, as I did here. So we'll add self to moves. And I think there's one more. Or this one will be Pokemon2.moves. Okay, let's try it again working it's working uh that outputs super ugly so i'm gonna go through new line new line new line i'm gonna put a lot of new lines in so many different places and now pokemon yes it's working so there you have it that is how you can create your pokemon game in python using python classes this was a beginner and introduction to Python classes. For more Python videos, please consider watching some of my other Python content. Thank you.